My people, not be smart, you know. Shetima don't come outside to come let us know, say, now the agricultural people, now make hungry, they catch Nigeria. He said because the food when Nigeria people suppose they chop, they enjoy. Now that they carry, they transport, and they go neighboring country. He said he came many truck with the catch, oh, because before Shetima come outside to come, they talk like this. They don't carry many things. They don't drag Tinubu and Shetima. So say, Shetima no fit for his office. Again, I say, okay, make a common sense to come talk to my people so that they go understand. My people not be so. Now some people talk, say, this one, I excuse you. Now, Shetima, they let us understand. Say, where the team for Ben come? Say, hungry way they for the countryside. Say, now the people will be saying they're in charge of food. Now, then they carry them, they transport them, they go to the body country. Now, they go to the country, they catch Nigeria. As that one talk, now they talk, say, okay. So now that one comes to make food a cost again. Now that one I make nera spoil like that. My people, many, many things they happen. No? Now people they thought say they not believe all those kind of talk. Oh, because many people they thought say, hey, if care is not taken. If care is not taken, hmm, my people not be my mouth now go say yeah, that one no. Make una go here waiting shit my talk. We be say many people come they drag them say for this time, this time we be say everywhere they read so we not go accept what you talk. They could not go here from Shetima. Wait, talk, say the hunger way there for grand. No be Tinubu cause I'm more. If they let us understand, say, no be Tinubu cause this hunger. Say, now people wait, they in charge your food. Now then they carry the food, go they give neighboring country. Say, the hunger, no be Tinubu and do. They could not go here from Shetima. And my fellow Nigerians, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to address you today at uh, this inaugural public wealth management conference hosted by the Ministry of Finance Incorporated Murphy. The eight point agenda of this administration kickstarted our journey of renewed hope and clearly articulated the direction of travel of our administration. Since our inauguration, we have made economic revitalization a top priority of the administration. At the core of this is ensuring optimal management of the assets and investments of the federal government towards unlocking their revenue potential. This includes our bold and achievable plan to double the GDP. Are you looking for where to buy your Osha Prampa Gele and all eyes on me Gele and Omo Jomolo to ban? No stress yourself, contact Zaino to ban. Now she they do about herself. This one not be saying she go to buy her from people. Now she they do about herself, my people. If on a one buy Osha Pram Pram Gele or more Jomolo to ban and all eyes on me Gele, contact Zaino to ban. If you want, now we say you want to sell them, you they live for abroad and you want to, uh, you want to resell this. To ban or auto gale, or you want to use that for O one B, or you want just just get her for us, just they change style. No worry yourself again. Contact sign up to ban. She go sell her for you for all sales price. Even if na Nigeria you they stay, sign up to ban. They for Nigeria where we say she they do all sharp pram pram gale and all eyes on me gale. Anyone where you want for to ban no. I mean for heart oh. All of them, they sign up to ban and contact sign up to ban now and thanks me later. The growth rate and significantly increase the GDP base over the next eight years. Three key priorities are at the forefront of this agenda. Firstly, we must focus on increasing economic growth by investing in key sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing, and technology. Secondly, we must hope to create more jobs for our citizens, particularly for our young people and women. And thirdly, we must attract more investment capital to, to Nigeria to support our growth and development. More recently, the federal government set a goal to raise at least $10 billion in order to increase foreign exchange liquidity a key ingredient to stabilize the Naira and grow the economy. At the heart of these goals is the imperative to expeditiously mobilize resources. Our low hanging fruit to achieve this is for us to identify, enumerate, rationalize, and optimize the investment assets of the federal government and ensure that these assets deliver maximum value and returns to our people. As you may be aware, 
Nigeria's public wealth is vast and diverse, encompassing everything from our infrastructure and real estate assets to our energy and financial assets. These assets are worth trillions of Naira and are spread across every corner of our great nation, from the bustling cities to the rural countries' height and beyond borders. However, for decades we have not had accurate records. A consolidated register of these assets scattered across hundreds of agencies. This has resulted in gross underutilization, mismanagement and loss of revenue running into trillions that could have addressed the welfare of Nigerians. The mandate and restructuring of the Ministry of Finance Incorporated MOPI represents a new chapter focused on harnessing our public wealth more strategically for growth and optimization. MOPI's role as custodian and active manager of the investments of the federal government now places it at the SP center of our economic development agenda. MOPI is charged with bringing expertise, transparency, and accountability to help in the realization of prosperity for our nation. I'm confident that public assets will now deliver significantly higher returns through improved corporate governance, innovative private partnerships, and by attracting alternative investment capital. Higher returns from public enterprises will provide crucial funding for education, healthcare, housing, power, roads, and other areas vital to lifting millions out of poverty. We will stimulate the various sectors for sustainable economic development while maximizing job creation for our youth. I must emphasize that this mandate is not just about increasing government revenues. More significantly, the optimization of the performance of public assets will catalyze inclusive and sustainable growth that creates jobs and prosperity. It will boost the funding for critical enablers like power, roads, healthcare, education and housing, all critical needs of our citizens. The efficient and transparent management of public resources is vital for building an equitable society and lifting millions out of poverty. This conference is therefore a starting point for a results-driven approach that utilizes public assets to drive growth and development for all Nigerians. I'm consequently calling on all stakeholders to constructively partner with MOPI on this journey to enhance and optimize the performance of our strategic assets. I urge all MDS, development finance institutions, relevant partners, and key players of the public and private sector to join us in unlocking Nigeria's full potential. Together, we'll build a brighter future for our country and create a Nigeria that is prosperous, inclusive, and sustainable. Why every Nigerian has the opportunity to thrive and truly benefit from our public wealth for generations to come. I do believe that harnessing our vast assets ultimately puts economic prosperity for all inside. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as alluded to by the Honorable Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, we are passing through some rough waters. But believe me, while there is a will, there is always a way. Troubling the weather might well be, but it won't rain forever. No matter how long the night is, it must give way to the light of the dawn. I want you fellow Nigerians, to invest your trust in Bola Ahmed Tine. He means well for the nation. I have seen his soul. He has a clean heart. And we know the consequences of unveiling a masquerade. There were albatrosses round the Nigerian neck. The albatross of subsidies where billions of Naira, or even trillions of Naira, were going into pockets of individuals.
when we are on the path to redemption. Wherever Nigeria goes, it's worth repeating. That's why Africa goes. One out of every four black men is a Nigerian. And by 2050, Nigeria will be the third most populous nation on earth. We are going to surpass the United States. One out of every three Nigerian, out of every three Africans, will be a Nigerian. We have to make this country work. We have to move beyond politics. We are now in the pace of governance. Sadly, sadly, some of our countrymen are still in the political mode. They are the practitioners of violence, advocating that they, are that they are Nigeria, our own country, our one and only Nigeria, should go the Venezuela way. Some are agitating that we should go the Lebanon way. But Nigeria is greater than any one of us here. Nigeria will weather the storm. Here's one. After coming on board, our revenue for sharing in PAC was 1.9 trillion naira. In order not to overheat the polity, the economy, we, have, we had to warehouse 1 trillion and share 900 billion. We are not all together in a very terrible partnership. Yes, there is the apex challenge, which all hands are on deck to see that we weather the storm. As I said, we know the consequences of unveiling the masquerade. Forces are hell-bent on plunging this country into a state of anarchy. Those that could not get into power through the ballot box, instead for them to wait till 2027, they are so desperate. If this country can fall apart as far as they are concerned, so be it. But we are going to resist them. Just three nights ago, 43 trucks of maize, 45, not even 43, were caught being transported to a neighboring country. Just in that Ilela axis, there are 32 illegal smuggling routes. And the moment those goods were intercepted, the price of maize fell by 10,000 naira. It came down from 60,000 to 50,000. And the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security is here. So there are forces that are helping on undermining our nation. But this is the time for us to coalesce into a single force. Rally around our president, rally around our government, rally around each other. We have the resources, we have the intellect, we have the capacity to turn the corner. And your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am talking to you, not as the vice president, I am talking to you as a fellow Nigerian. I am assuring you that we have crossed the Rubicon. We are on a path to improved economic performance. But let's unite. What binds us together surpasses whatever that divides us. Politics come and goes. The highest any president can say in office is eight years. Whether we like it or not, we spend more years of our lives outside power than in power. I was alluded to the fact that four years ago I was out of power, and any time I get a call from Mr. Tony Elliman, it used to lift my spirit. And very soon, whether I like it or not, the changing portions of time will make me to step aside. So are we going to destroy this country? What are we bequeathing to future generations? It's very important that let's look at the larger picture. Let us look at the interests of our nation, which surpasses any other individual political interest. I have only one passport. I have only the Nigerian passport. I do not have a Moroccan wife or a house in Dubai. This is why I belong to you. And this is why I will die. And this is why I will get born. At the appropriate time, we are poised. We have the capacity to respond. But we are exercising due respect. 
we have the parts at our disposal. And the truth that sets men free, as H.S. Aga said, is often the truth that men prefer not to hear. Years of abuse, years of neglect, years of mismanagement, we are now paying the price. But as my boss is fond of saying, we knew the challenges. It's not for us to approach on blame, but to accept the responsibility of leadership. Theodore Rinpoche. <laughs> leadership is about taking painful decisions. Leadership goes beyond criticism. As Theodore Roosevelt said, I leave you with that quote. He said, it is not the critics who counts. It is not the man who points why the strong man stumbles or why the doer of this should have done better, will have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, but who valiantly strikes, who else, who falls short again and again. But he strives on, and his place is not with those cold and timid souls who know no victory, no defeat. We are poised to change this nation, and we are going to reach the promised land. Come and join us, ladies and My people now the video now on a new watch finish. So on a see what the for inside the video. All right, my people, make gonna let me know what you on a thing for the comment section. And if you never subscribe, make gonna subscribe so that I don't miss any latest just we are the upload. On a bye bye till I come on a next time. Bye, guys. That's my next video. Bye, guys.